Hey guys, so welcome to my how to turn your drawings into seamless surface patterns tutorial. The first thing you want to do, of course, is to have your sketches, your drawings. I've just done them in my sketchbook with a normal black pen on white paper. I would highly suggest that you draw with some sort of dark ink, preferably black, onto a white surface because that'll make removing the background stuff much easier further down the line and I'll show you how to do that. If you're curious as to what pen I use, I use this OptiFlow pen which you can only get at Staples which they do not have in Hong Kong but seriously just use any kind of like fine liner pen or whatever medium you want just make sure it's dark enough and on a bright and clean enough surface. When you're scanning it in I would suggest to scan it in at a resolution of somewhere in between 300 to 1200 dpi. If you scan in at 1200 dpi, you will get the best quality lines. It'll, they'll be nice and crisp. If you scan in at 300, that would be sort of the minimum resolution that it should be at. You really shouldn't go anywhere underneath. Because otherwise, if you decide to print your surface pattern in any way, it just won't look good. So I'm going to be scanning in my drawings at 600 dpi because that is the maximum resolution that my scanner will scan at. And depending on what your final output would be, let's say it will be in printed form, then you will want to have your color be CMYK. So let's just quickly change um, your color profile to CMYK. So yeah, just going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and use the lasso tool and just cut out all this stuff. Oh, by the way, if you want, this is optional, you can hit Command J. Just make a, a duplicate of the base layer so that you have kind of like a safety net. Just it's not visible and then, uh, wait, hold on, I have to make it visible first. Then you lock it and then you can make it invisible so it's not bothering you. Okay, so go back to the active layer. Now I want to show you how to get rid of the white stuff. Again, if you don't want to know any of this, you can just skip, but I want to make this video like slightly beginner friendly. Okay, so to get rid of the white, there's a really easy way to do that, um, especially if you have your drawing in black ink on white surface. I really recommend that you do that. So you go to color range, and then you hit highlights, which is the color of the paper. And then I don't really have an explanation for this part, but you kind of just mess around with these two bars, these two values until you get what you want. And then you will see that that function will select all of the white areas. And then you can take it a step further and go to select and mask and this will help you like smooth out the selection so I like to have the shift on a little bit not too much and then the smooth on a little bit and that's all I do and then the all the red stuff shows you what's going to be deleted then you hit okay okay and then you can just hit delete and that'll get rid of all the white stuff Yay, and that'll make your work much, much easier to work with. Um, the next thing I like to do is I like to hit Command Shift N to create a new layer, then drag that layer underneath, and then you can hit, I always forget which one it is, but either Command, nope, not Command, Option Delete, and then you create like a white layer that's like underneath your line work so it's easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and save this first as peach pattern, then as a tiff, and I'm just going to save on my desktop, and I'm going to continue this in a bit because I have to go eat something now. So now I think maybe the lines aren't strong enough, so what I want to do is I'm actually going to Command J copy this, and then I'm going to set it on multiply, and then you already see like they're slightly stronger. So then I'm going to select both layers and hit Command E to merge them. And then they're slightly stronger now.
I'm going to try and make the center of the seamless pattern tile. So I'm just going to kind of arrange these guys into like more of like a cluster, I guess, if I can call it. It's a really good idea idea to already when you're doing the drawing to uh, have all the little elements of the pattern to already be kind of clustered so that you don't have to think about clustering it too much when you're doing the layout on the computer. Now I just quickly want to show you something that I like to do before I move on to the next stage which is to color all of this. So just go to the white background layer, hit Control i to invert the layer. And this way you can kind of check if there are any like bits and pieces that maybe you missed out and you want to erase before you um, ever print this because sometimes there can be like flecks of dirt and oops, uh, flecks and dirt of of dirt and color that you can't see on the screen and then you see it when you print out and then sometimes it's too late so especially around the edges like you can't see them so I like to just kind of go around and uh, you, with the rectangular selection tool just select the edges and hit delete and then I just like to zoom in and just get rid of some of the flex. Some of them are they're okay to leave because they're not gonna so after I've done that, I'll just go back to the background layer and hit Command I to invert the layer back to white. Now we want to move on to the coloring. Let's change the color of this background layer. So I think maybe like a nice sky blue would be nice. And I think it's practical actually to have the background color separate from everything else you're going to do because um, that will make everything easier to alter on later down the line. So color in just with option delete and now I'm going to hit command shift N, command shift N and make a new layer and now I'm just going to color this all in. But before I do that I'm going to go to the line work layer again and make it, uh, set it to multiply so that it'll blend nicely with the color layer. A very easy way to color in individual elements if you want to do it this way is you can um, just get your lasso tool and select around the area on the layer that's underneath the multiply line work layer and then from there you can uh, hit option delete and the color that you select here will fill in this area. Simplified the layers a bit, uh, we can go ahead and make our square swatch. So I'm just going to reposition this guy down here. And we want to make the canvas come as close as possible to the, this cluster so that we can create the seamless edges more easily. Hit Option, Command, C so that you can manipulate the canvas size. And what I want to do is I want to actually bring it down. So um, I'm going to hit this arrow here. And right now we see that the width is 20.9. Well, let's just change it to 20. And then we can also change the height to 20 cm. And I hit OK. 
and it should be okay. And then you have that 